orar para el Espíritu Santo que venga y rote por nosotros para que Él hable y no que yo hablando, pero es su palabra que estoy diciendo, que no que es palabra de humano, pero algo divina de Dios. Y para que te hable en todo tu corazón, en el nombre del Padre y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. So, think is grow with God. Or what does it mean to grow with God? Grow with God means to have a relationship with Him. We have to have a relationship with Him in order to feel with Him. So, in order to have a relationship with Him, you have to know Him. You have to know His nature. Jesus was God's nature. He lived as an example of how we should act. Jesus was humble, generous, kind, and forgiving. Jesus was kind to everybody he met. He forgave sinners and didn't condemn them. He forgave a lady that was about to be stoned for adultery by, by the wise men. Wise men, were, they were supposed to be wiser than all the other people. And they wanted to stone her because they caught her in an act of sin against God. Back then, the, the punishment for sinning was being killed, being stoned. But Jesus said, whoever has not sinned, throw the first stone. And, and Jesus was the only one left. When he looked back, everybody was gone. And he forgave that lady right there and then. So God was merciful. Jesus was merciful. Jesus was generous with his power. He fed over 5,000 people with only five loaves of bread and two fish. Imagine that. Imagine 5,000 people gave only five little pieces of bread and fish. He fed them all. Every single person that asked him for healing, he did it because they believed. Every single person. He went up to the blind. He gave them sight. He went up to the paralyzed and he brought them up. People have never walked before. They learned to walk because Jesus was generous with his power. Jesus knew who he was. He knew the power he had, but he humbled himself. He humbled himself enough to be a servant. He humbled himself enough to be a teacher. Jesus never made a mistake. Jesus never made one mistake in his whole entire life. We can never be like he was. But because of him, we can make mistakes. We can make mistakes and be as pure and clean as he was. Through his sacrifice, our, our sins are clean. Through his sacrifice, what? Anything that we have done is gone. We're stainless. We're pure. We have, we have no impurity in us because his sacrifice cleaned our sins. Because of him, we're able to have a relationship with God. Because sin is separation from God. And that's why it's important to be sinless in God's eyes. Jesus in order to have a relationship with him. To have a relationship with God is just being connected with God. Knowing how to look for God is, is key. There is no better place in the Bible than Proverbs. Proverbs is an amazing book and it teaches you how to be connected with the Lord. So let's go to Proverbs 9 10. Proverbs 9 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. That's the first step into knowing God. The, it's the first thing that we have to learn to do because to fear God is not being scared of God, but it's to fear being separated. We have to be afraid of being separated from God because that's what sin is, it's the separation from God. So that's why the fear of the Lord is hating 
being sick, separated from sin. And that's what, and loving God is hating sin. That what this verse is trying to say. Fear the Lord. Loving God and hating sin is the beginning of understanding. Let's look at David in First Samuel sixteen seven.
stop sinning, to stop sinning is to submit to the Spirit. That's how we submit to the Spirit. When we, when we give up what our body wants. Because like, we're going to see something that we want. We're going to feel something that we want. But that's how that's what we got to do. God looks at that. God sees you doing that. God, and God is favorable. He looks for those who are submissive. To tremble at his words. Fearing God. We have to follow what the example of David. David is such a big example for us. Because out of all the Jews, he chose him. This is important because the Jews were God's people. They had customs. They had customs. They had to do way more than we have to do. They have to do more than Christians. They have to, they have to stay holy. It's part of their custom. They can't eat pork. They can't eat food that's not grown by them. It's not blessed by them. They can't eat other people's food. They can't they have to wait till marriage. They have to pray every day. They have to fast regularly because that's their custom. They have to memorize God's word because that's their custom. That's what they have to do. But it's different. It's different from doing something because you have to do it. It's different from reading the Bible because your mom tells you to your dad tells you to, but instead of just reading the Bible because you want to, it's different thanking God for your day because you have to, you feel like you have to be thankful instead of really being grateful for what God has given you. Because that's what David had. That's what God looks for us to have. David loved God. David wasn't scared of anything. David loved and trusted God with his own life. He went against Goliath. Goliath was like 10 feet tall, huge, monster. He could kill anybody with the swipe of his hand. But David was not scared of him, he challenged him. 1 Samuel 17, 26. David spoke to the man who was standing with him. What will be done for the man who kills this man, Philistine, and removes this disgrace from Israel? Just who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of God? David was upset because Goliath didn't just challenge their army and said, bring who, who's not scared of me, bring your best warrior to try to kill me, I'll fight him off. And you have to be my slave. But he blasphemed the name of God. He cursed God's name. And, he, and, and the whole army was stunned. David was so offended that he called them an uncircumcised Philistine. It was like a curse to him. It's like, he's like roasting. He was roasting. He was like, look at this uncircumcised Philistine. Like, it's like somebody talks about your mom. Gotta you take off his head. You gotta take off somebody's head for insulting somebody that you love, right? And that's how much David loved God. He felt so offended. They wanted to take off Goliath's head. Well, he literally did. And that's why the fear of the Lord is so important. Because to understand wisdom of the Bible, understand what you're reading, understand what your pastor is trying to tell you, is you have to be able to read the Bible and understand what it says. That's why the fear of the Lord is important. Because you could read the Bible now instead of think. I've done that. I read the Bible and didn't understand anything because, because my dad told me to. In first Ecclesiastes, 12 Ecclesiastics, 
I was going to go to hell. My, my soul was going to be gone forever. It's not worth it. It's not, it wasn't worth it to me. It wasn't worth being the world and losing my soul. It wasn't worth it to me. That's why when you repent and look for God, He will reveal Himself to you. God, God found me. I had a I had an encounter with God. When, when the enemy was, was attacking me, I had an encounter with God. When I repented, I felt his presence. It was stronger than anything I ever felt in my life. I felt the pressure that God, God had. I felt that, I felt that the, the thing that made me feel weak, God made that feel weak. The devil made me feel weak because he controlled me. He manipulated my mind. Make me think things that I didn't want to think. Trick me to doing something that I didn't want to do, or it made me think I wanted to do it. But because of Jesus, because of his name, I was able to be saved. And that's how powerful God is. He helps. He helps me. He wants to help his people. He wants you to know him. Because once you experience God, you want to seek Him more and more. You want to have that relationship with God. You want Him, and God wants you as well. By prayer, fasting, and reading the Bible, you will know God. Because of Jesus, all your sins will be forgiven. So you have the opportunity to know Him. God loves you so much that Jesus died. Jesus died so we could have eternal life. Our lives have to have purpose. Our lives have purpose right now. Because as Christians, it's our job to save and help others to find God so they can be saved like us. It's our job to be saved. It's our job to find other people to save them from eternal damnation. Eternal. That's why Jesus came. He came, came for the sinners. We were once sinners. We were all sinners, but we came to church. We, we grew up Christian. We were lucky to be Christian. We were lucky to have God with parents. The beauty of the gospel is that in Mark, John, Luke, and Matthew, that you can, uh, that it gives us that relationship with God. You know you have a relationship with God when you tell others about Jesus. In order to grow that relationship that you have with them, in order to know, once when you tell people about Jesus, you know He's real. You know He's real. You're, you're telling God, "I believe in you. I believe in your Son. I believe in your message that I grew up with, that I, I learned from people because they told me this is true. They told me that this is good. God is good." In order to grow that relationship, you have to read the Bible and follow what the Bible says. You have to follow what Jesus taught. You have to love your neighbor. You have to love your God. Honor and respect your parents. Like I said, Proverbs is an amazing book. It gives us, it tells us how to grow our relationship with God. Go to Proverbs 6, 20 to 22. My son, keep your father's command and don't reject your mother's teaching. Always bind them to your heart and tie them around your neck. When you walk here and there, they will guide you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. When you wake up, they will talk to you. You're blessed if you have godly parents. I'm, I know I'm lucky to have mine. My parents always, always looked for me. When I was lost, they they my mom always called me. She was trying to know where I was. My parents always tried to talk to me, but I ignored them because I was lost. I didn't want to tell them where I was. 
I don't want to tell them that I was born because they, I knew it was wrong. I knew they wouldn't like it. I knew my parents just wanted me to be good. But being good for me was it fun because my flesh wanted that. My flesh wanted some fun, you know? My flesh wants to party. My flesh wants to drink. My flesh wants to smoke. That's what my flesh wants. But because of my parents, they, they planted seeds in me to know what I wanted. And I'm just lucky to have my parents because they guide me, they help me in every way. God has put your parents there for you to have a more successful life and help you with the path of the world. Your parents are there to keep you alive longer. Because, of, because the worst is there. Because your parents know the worst that's going to happen when you go somewhere you're not supposed to. They're there to advise you. They're there to tell you that this is the worst thing that could happen. This, this could happen. The worst is there because the devil makes it happen. Because the devil plans for that to happen. Your parents know the bad because they know the devil. Because they know God. So you know, when you know God, when you know what's good, you know what's bad. You know what you're not supposed to do. But when you know what's bad, you know what's good, and you do the bad thing, that's where you fall. That's why I'm on calls with every day. When she doesn't know where I'm at, she calls me. My, my parents tracked my phone 24 7 because I would never tell them where I was at when I was doing something dumb. Your relationship has to be good with your parents. Because only God loves you more than your parents. It's a law, it's a commandment. Honor your mother and father. Because they will guide you. They have wisdom. They're there to put you on a straight path with God. When you need, when you have a question about life, about God, about the Bible, you ask your parents first. I ask my parents for advice in every way. My parents help me with everything. My mom has given me so many things, I can't even count. My mom has helped me so much. And all I did for her was wrong. But now, I talk to my mom every day, I talk to her about my day now. I call my mom to know where she's at. Because I love my parents. I like when they when they call me. I like when my mom calls me because it feels good to know that she's thinking about me. It feels good to be loved, right? Everybody wants love. God wants to love. God wants love from you. That's why Proverbs is such a good book. It teaches you so many things. It's, it's so easy to read the Bible. Just read, to read, just, all you gotta do is read Proverbs. Read Proverbs one day a month. So if it's the first day, read the first chapter. If it's the second day, read the second chapter. If it's the 15th, read the 15th. Like today, it's the 19th. You can read the 19th chapter today. And start from there, go up, go back down. That's what my dad taught me. Tommy, you just read it one day at a time because when you go back to it the next time, you're going to get something new. You get something new from the Bible every day because God's talking to you. That's how you're forming that relationship because it's God, God is guiding you. When you pray, when you have that relationship with God, you feel His presence. It feels good. It feels like it feels like love. It feels like it's there. When you when you look for God, He'll reveal Himself to you. And you will know He's there. You can see Him. You can feel Him. You can hear Him. God wants to find you. 